Hi, I'm Michael Boyanjan, and I'm going to do a second video here on uh, uh, a book that just got released. Uh, you've heard from me uh, in 12 books about my life with my late wife, Jerry. And this new book, uh, you'll be hearing directly from Jerry in her own voice. Uh, but for uh, two sketches in which I... Uh, I speak. Uh, and again, Jerry uh, will be telling people about her life and, and me as well. And um, the name of the book is The Sketchbook of Jerry Wagner Artist, which is uh, taken from her favorite author, Washington Irving, and one of his early books, which was um, uh, The Sketchbook of uh, Jeffrey uh, Crayon, Gentleman. And again, um, uh, that was one of Jerry's favorite authors. She was very much into 19th century authors. Edgar Allan Poe, Nathaniel Hawthorne, uh, Washington Irving was the, the top one, and uh, Emily Dickinson, and um, I can continue down the list, uh, But and Herman Melville. And um, in any event, uh, <clears throat> uh, Washington Irving uh, was uh, famous also for his book on the Alhambra, which became an international bestseller. He was the first American to achieve that status, and it saved the Alhambra from ruin. Uh, it is today a World Heritage Site. Um, but I'd like to talk a little about the intellectual origins of this type of a book, and probably the, uh, uh, you know, but for the title, it really is not like Washington Irving's book. Uh, which is actually his book was an, uh, uh, some a selection of uh, short story fiction short stories. Uh, the title is, uh, is a tip of the hat to Jerry's favorite author, uh, but the book is more like uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald's Notebook, uh, um, which is an interesting book where he just lists all these notes, sort of like a writing exercise, I guess. Uh, you know, one topic per page. And that type of book is also similar to probably the most famous version of it, although the F. Scott Fitzgerald one is is a really good read, is Ernest Hemingway's A Movable Feast, which describes a uh, short period of time in the 1920s uh, with all the expats in uh, Paris, all the writers, artists, and they weren't all American, they were from Spain and uh, Armenia even, and the French themselves. Uh, but um, it was really loaded up with Americans. Um, Ernest Hemingway, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Sel Zelda Fitzgerald, um, uh, uh, Faulkner was there. Uh, Gertrude Stein was like the, the matron of the art world there. Uh, and again, um, you had this uh, bookstore, uh, Shakespeare and Company, uh, which... Um, it's not the same owner, but it's still in existence in Paris today, and it's worth a visit. And nearby are the bookstalls along the uh, uh, the uh, the river, the Seine River. And um, um, that bookstore uh, is the only reason James Joyce's Ulysses was published. No one else would touch it. Everyone was afraid of getting sued or arrested by the uh, the police back then. Uh, but it got released, and it is one of the greatest works of literature there is today, uh, Ulysses uh, by James Joyce. It's one day in the life of a, of his uh, protagonist in Dublin. Uh, <clears throat> in any event, uh, and stream of consciousness, consciousness like uh, Toni Morrison and William Faulkner. But anyhow, um, so yes, The Movable Feast is the book we know uh, where you meet the characters that are great, representations of literature and art, music, etc. I mean, Josephine Baker it was was one of the expats, and everyone liked her so much that the uh, Germans uh, would would tell her secret uh, information, which we, which she usually would deliver to the uh, the Allies. <laughs> Pretty funny story. But anyhow, um, the, that style of book actually goes back 2,500 years to Plato, Plato's Symposium, which was a one-day dinner party, which featured a who's who of the ancient Greek uh, writers, historians, politicians, soldiers, you name it, they were there, celebrities, 
<laughs> and um, it's a one day dinner party. And, um, um, you know, you just see he doesn't hold back anything, you know. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting. There's so much mind power in this one dinner party that uh, launched the uh, uh, the uh, Western world, I guess. <laughs> but anyhow, the, that style did not go out of style. It's around today. And two books that come to mind are uh, Patti Smith's um, uh, Just Kids, uh, about her uh, relationship with uh, Maplethorpe uh, in um, uh, when they when they both uh, lived in the Chelsea uh, Hotel in uh, Manhattan and uh, were getting their careers going, and um, you know it, you, you don't it's it's pretty amazing who Patti Smith knew back then. You we think of her as a uh, punk star, but uh, uh, she knew everyone uh, who in rock music prior to the punk punk rock uh, movement. From Jimi Hendrix to um, uh, Janis Joplin. In fact, I'm, she she seems to imply that she got uh, Janis into the word Pearl, uh, you know, which is, uh, you know, one of her things. But uh, anyhow, um, and of course, the other one which came out before Patti Smith's uh, book, and there's other stars doing this, uh, was Bob, Dil Bob Dylan's Chronicles. Um, which were very interesting, and uh, if uh, what he went through, I'll tell you, uh, you know, he'd be peacefully playing his piano in Woodstock in his house, and some somehow someone would get into the house and be sitting next to him. Uh, so that's why he uh, he uh, headed west. I won't say where he went, but he headed out west. Uh, anyhow, that's a little about what uh, this book is like. And again, like I say, is closer to. Um, um, uh, F. Scott's uh, notebooks, because um, we're not really uh, dropping any names in here. Uh, it's basically Jerry's story and, uh, you know, and me tagging along. Anyhow, enjoy the book. Happy holidays. And again, it's the sketchbook of Jerry Wagner, artist. <laughs>